Um, I'm here uh, talking to Medea Benjamin. I'm from Code Pink USA. Um, and uh, she's here to talk a bit about um, Trump and the women's movement in America. Um, so nice it's been around. You. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to join you. Um, so it's been around two years um, now since the first Women's March. And I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about what the legacy of, has been of that action since then. The legacy has really been mobilizing. This has been two years of nonstop organizing, not just by women who've been very active in things like trying to stop the Supreme Court nominee uh, that we felt was, uh, had a history of uh, abuse towards women. Um, and certainly the Me Too movement has continued to thrive. Uh, but it's been a time of mobilizing in general. We have a great new movement around the call for a, 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 a green new deal, uh, a very bold call saying we have to uh, counter Trump and the climate deniers and uh, really uh, put energy and resources behind a movement to address the environmental crisis. Uh, we have a lot of new energy around the immigration crisis, thanks to Trump uh, and the uh, border uh, disaster that he's created, including a government shutdown. And I would also say around the peace issues, um, there is uh, a lot more organizing and energy in the last two years than we saw under the Obama administration. Great, yeah. Um, and uh, we often, when we talk about Trump, um, kind of focus on the things he said, particularly around women, um, his kind of particularly outrageous remarks, which obviously um, are a huge issue. Um, but how can we keep the conversation um, more broad, for example, on the, the topic of the war economy and the kind of broader context of the things that Trump is trying to do? Well, we've been really doing an educational campaign to try to get people to understand what is continuity from administration to administration? What is part of the military industrial congressional complex that keep these wars going on? For example, the tremendously bloated uh, Pentagon budget that this year we are determined to create a coalition to address these issues and say this is where the big pot of money is that can go to fund uh, the Green New Deal or, or the Medicare for All campaign that we have. Uh, and uh, we also are part of a, uh, an educational campaign to explain that um, while there are some things that uh, Trump has done that are worse than under the uh, uh, the previous administration, like getting even closer to the Netanyahu uh, government, moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, uh, getting out of the Iran nuclear deal, which we find very, very upsetting. We also want to uh, not be knee-jerk in our reaction to Trump uh, when he is doing things that we support, such as uh, talks with North Korea to try to find some uh, peaceful resolution to that seven decade old conflict, uh, or his recent calls for removing the US troops from Syria or cutting in half the number of troops in Afghanistan. Uh, so it is an important time for us to be calling for a new peace deal where people can have a vision of what is it that we want in the peace movement, not always just being against what our government is doing. That's really interesting. Um, and speaking of kind of the peace movement and the way that we um, take these issues forward, um, here in the UK, we've um, seen the rise of this new organization or a sort of reforming of an organization called Extinction Rebellion, who are kind of moving away from sort of traditional marches and rallies as a way of um, demanding change and uh, we're seeing a rise in direct action. Um, and I wondered what your thoughts are on kind of traditional means of lobbying, um, new methods um, and the kind of things that Code Pink do to try and raise awareness and force change. We think it's important to use all the tools in the toolkit that we have. We believe in mass marches. We're getting ready for the third Women's March, which is happening next weekend. Uh, there's an Indigenous People March that we're helping to organize for. Uh, so those are certainly continue to be very important venues. Uh, but Code Pink has always believed that 
uh, we have to be more creative in our actions, especially because uh, the media is not particularly interested in our marches anymore. Uh, so, uh, and, and we believe that we should take our actions to the people in power. We do actions constantly in our Congress, uh, in the hearings, uh, in the offices of the Congress people. Uh, we have um, oftentimes have to risk arrest when we do those things. Yesterday, there were several of our people who got arrested in an action at the steps of the Supreme Court uh, when we have been protesting the uh, continued uh, uh, Guantanamo prison. We are constantly doing protests around the U.S. participation in the Saudi-led war in Yemen. And from those, we protest at the Saudi embassy or uh, at the White House, but we also try to find more creative ways like um, we have used the 40 backpacks of the children in Yemen that were uh, killed in a, with the U.S. bomb and taken them to the headquarters of the manufacturers who make those bombs. Uh, and sometimes we even go to the homes of the CEOs uh, or the homes of our members of Congress. Uh, so we think direct action is very important. Um, we also have another campaign that I wanted to mention that is somewhere between the comfort zone of getting out in the streets and marching uh, and those who might not be ready to um, uh, get arrested at somebody's home. And that is the Divest from the War Machine campaign we have that is going to our cities, pension funds, um, universities, individuals and saying uh, there are ways that we can pull our money out of the war machine. We have a database now that can show you uh, the different investment firms and who is invested in the weapons companies. And we've also taken this to our members of Congress to say that um, they should not be taking money from these companies. They're the ones that vote to uh, give uh, for weapon sales, for the bloated Pentagon budget. We consider it a conflict of interest. And so we've gotten about 20 members of Congress, and we hope to get a lot more this year to pledge that they will not take money from the weapons companies. Wow, that's really amazing and really interesting to hear about how you've used a kind of a real spectrum of tools of, of direct action um, to make those points. Uh, before we finish, is there anything else that you'd like to add or anything else that you'd like to say? We do feel that we need more uh, organizing together with our uh, brothers and sisters across the uh, Atlantic. And uh, we would love to think of ways to work together. For example, with Trump unilaterally pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal and more aggression towards Iran happening now, uh, we are very concerned about that and feel like working with our European partners could uh, help to put the pressure on uh, the U.S. administration. Um, we feel like these efforts to divest from the war machine go hand in hand with the things that you all are doing uh, and that we could work together uh, on these kinds of campaigns. The same weapons companies that are producing the bombs killing children in Yemen are the ones that are producing the nuclear weapons that we uh, all are fighting against. So uh, I look forward in the coming year to finding ways that we can uh, bridge the gap between the work we're doing and become more effective as we work more together. Absolutely. Um, and lovely to end on such a positive note. Um, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. I hope it's a great day. Thank you.